uploading. Don't believe them. Don't trust them. They are dying. Let them die. Before we get too far into this, it is important to understand that this is an analysis of what has been presented to us on screen since the inception of the Star Trek franchise. It is not an attempt to give an opinion, nor even to infer anything. I will admit that I was given this thought when I saw the judgmental mob go after yet another content creator for daring to have an opinion that was, well, right of mouth. But that's neither here nor there. The truth is what it is, don't get mad at me because I'm just presenting it to you. Let's take a look at a society that allied with governments that would put the Nazis to shame. Namely, let's analyze the Federation. Starships chase us through the Badlands, and our supporters are harassed and ridiculed. Why? Because we've left the Federation, and that's the one thing you can't accept. It's probably important to define fascism before we discuss the fascistic states. Ironically, fascism seems to have a definition, yet be hard to apply to other governments, so we're going to do the best we can. From everything I've found, fascism is a political philosophy, movement, or regime that exalts nation, and often races, above the individual, and that stands for a centralized autocratic government headed by a dictatorial leader. Severe economic and social regimentation, and forcible suppression of opposition. There we go, we've defined it to the best of our ability. Now you can go ahead and make jokes how I just defined whatever political party you don't like in the comments, because I know you're all going to do it. I'll just take a minute so you can. Go ahead. All right, with that out of the way, let's take a look throughout the centuries what the Federation has done and who they've done it with. You will extend Chancellor Gorkin full diplomatic courtesy, Captain. But a full ambassador would be better equipped. If there's no further business, I wish you and your crew Godspeed. The Klingon Empire was founded in the 9th century and expanded its borders in all directions. The most common way of expansion was by conquering systems and incorporating those systems into their glorious empire. The lucky denizens of these worlds would become slaves to the empire and required to help grow the organization, while the unlucky ones had all of their supplies plundered and would be left to die. Klingons dedicated their entire way of life, including the politics, to the art of war. At least, that's what they say they did. They were more just glorified Vikings that had a government to back them. This leads us to our first real interesting discussion. The moon's decimation means the deadly pollution of their ozone. They will have depleted their supply of oxygen in approximately 50 Earth years. Due to their enormous military budget, the Klingon economy does not have the resources with which to combat this catastrophe. You see, in 2293, the government that enslaved people and was continually raiding other governments, including the Federation, would see its empire come to the brink of destruction, this largely due to their moon exploding. The Federation, under the guidance of Spock, would reach out an olive branch and ultimately completely support the government economically. Now, to be fair, it's more complicated than I'm presenting it, but let's not underscore the fact that the Klingon Empire was still in my opinion, a fascist government at the time, and even after the Alliance, would not give up any of its territory or grant self-governance to the people that had been enslaved by, well, by the Klingons. Hell, this ally of the Federation would not allow women to serve at the top echelons of the body politic. They couldn't be on the council without a phenomenal exception. The rot within the Empire would not even be burnt out, as we'd see how easy it is for the Klingons to revert back to whom they were when they disagreed with the United Federation of Planets. And you know, in the next generation, what the Romulans had said was ultimately true. Starfleet had put a leash on the Klingons, but that was about it. They hadn't really changed them. Not yet, anyway. Speaking of governments that could never be leashed, that leads us to the Cardassian Empire. If I had attempted to board that ship, I'm quite certain that you and I would not be having this pleasant conversation. And that ships on both sides would now be arming for war. They had a government set up to look like it had some semblance of a democracy or free thought, but this government was ultimately a military dictatorship that, due to a lack of resources, was extremely expansionistic. It pushed out on all sides, coming up against the borders of the Federation and causing the Cardassian border wars. How did the Federation and Starfleet deal with such a threat that was known to harm its own people? Well, they'd create a deal that ceded multiple planets and territories, and creating an area where Federation citizens were under Cardassian rule. And note, there was one Maquis colony that gave up their own rights, but, but that wasn't all of the Maquis colonies. 
Let's not underscore this. The Federation made a deal that ceded multiple planets. And after giving up all this territory, the Federation not only continued to keep this agreement, but did nothing as Federation citizens under Cardassian rule were subjugated, tortured, and sometimes even killed. The Federation continued to have open relations and trade agreements with the Cardassians, even though they knew that the military was actively helping dissidents to attack its own citizens. They sat in paradise while other people were in danger. See it as their sacred duty to bring order to the galaxy, their order. Do you think they'll sit idly by while you keep your chaotic empire right next to their perfect order? No. Speaking of the Cardassians, one can't even begin to discuss them without thinking of the Dominion. The Dominion is an authoritarian government that holds all of its power by the changelings. These beings create slave races to do their bidding, including the Vorda, whom are the diplomats, and the Jim'Hadar, who are the soldiers. They require all of the species that are conquered and consumed by them to gear their efforts towards the body politic and create weapons and technology to fill their military might. The Federation would not only engage in diplomatic overtures with this hostile government, but attempt to come to peace accords and agreements. There would be joint military operations against rebel elements within the Dominion, and hell, the Federation didn't even do anything when the Dominion helped wipe out the Maquis. You remember those Federation citizens I was talking about not less than 30 seconds ago? Yeah, they killed all of them, and the Federation and Starfleet did nothing. They only decided to engage in military intervention after a Dominion buildup happened on their doorstep and threatened their interests directly, which is convenient. As I inferred at the top, it's really interesting to me how fans are divided today, with the most liberal elements demanding people be ostracized and even violence used against extreme right-wing elements. But Star Trek has always been contrary to that thought. And the funny thing is, the dirty little secret is, according to Star Trek, the way you should do it is the way the Federation handles it. Because, at least in the Star Trek universe, Eddington was right about one thing, as was Quark. The Federation is like root beer. It's insidious, infectious, and it changes things and people. Every government that ever interacts with the United Federation of Planets is irrevocably changed. That government ultimately becomes something better. From the Dominion to the Klingons to the Cardassians, and yes, dear viewer, even the Romulans. I'll be honest, as I continue to watch politics and study the human condition, I do wonder if Star Trek has it right. I'm beginning to disagree with them, but what do you guys think? Because all of these are my opinions. What are yours? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next Lore Reloaded. Because we've left the Federation, and that's the one thing you can't accept. Nobody leaves Paradise. Everyone should want to be in the Federation. Hell, you even want the Cardassians to join. You're only sending them replicators because one day they can take their rightful place on the Federation Council. You know, in some ways, you're even worse than the Borg.